The world is in a massive transition. Are you prepared? Hi, I'm Reverend Tracy L. And I am here to help you navigate through these uncharted waters. Many experts told me it was not possible to repair, regenerate, and restore my body. I proved them all wrong. Isn't it time for you to reclaim what is rightfully yours? If your answer is yes, then I invite you to join me while I will help you embrace the new earth and unlock your unlimited potential. Let's connect every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on The Tracy L. Clark Show, as featured on Transformation Talk Radio. The old ways of connecting are done, so let's embrace together the new and unleash the superhuman within. Welcome back to this week's show. So happy to have our new listeners and our returning listeners. And we have a great show today. You know, there's been so much change and shift, and I'm sure you can feel the vibrations that have really come in this September. They're high creation, manifestation. It's absolutely incredible. And if you're locking into that, I know many of you have because you've sent me feedback how the amazing things that are happening in your life. And this is why I'm so excited for today's show, because I have an old friend and a guest, and we are going to chat for the whole hour about really stepping into your unlimited self. So for those of you I haven't met, I'm Reverend Tracy L, and I'm so happy that you're here. We have with us today James Sinclair, who is the producer of the first movie, What If? And I know many of you have probably seen it, because I always tell you to go watch it. And he just released his newest film, The Grand Self. And what I love so much about it and the feedback I know he's getting and I'm getting and watching it is it really is perfect timing for this film if you haven't seen it. And the reason it's perfect timing is exactly what we keep talking about with the new earth, with new things that are coming and really the old is crumbling so you can step into the new and really celebrate it, not be afraid of it because this is your time. So I'm going to welcome James. Thank you, James, for coming to the show today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. I am so happy to have you here. You know, the film is great feedback. You're getting it. I'm getting it. But, you know, sometimes I'm, and this is, I always found interesting watching the film. I know it's taken, it's always a process to unlock things. But the timing is absolutely perfect. Like, you couldn't have launched this at a more perfect time. People are feeling a little disconnected. They're feeling like, where am I going? Is this okay? And, you know, I, people are, are writing me back going, oh my God, I cried. I think I can get back into more, you know, of who I am and this unlimited space. And this is what I want to be able to talk to you about for the listeners, because a lot of people see this later. We go to 90 outlets, people know that. But can you just express a little bit more to the listeners of your journey and why it was so important to do this film for you. <laughs> sure, Tracy. Yeah, and the feedback we're, we're getting really is uh, overwhelming, you know? And uh, my favorite feedback actually is when people write in and they say, uh, and, and this happened also with What If the Movie, when they write in and they say, thank you for reminding me what I've always known to be true inside me. And it's like, Constantly, we are all connected to this greater source, right? This light, this beauty, this joy, this magnificence that we are. And it's constantly sending us, you know, messages, images. And through our, because of our conditioning, we filter out these messages. And a lot of these messages are, you know, do this great thing or this, this inspiration that's welling up, you know, or, or, you know, you can do whether you're greater than you've been conditioned to be. And we often hear them, but we so quickly discard them. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. You know, it's like, that's risky. That doesn't make any sense to move across the country or whatever it is, you know. Um, and so we've been conditioned to play little and to play small. And so our conditioning has actually created a small version of ourselves and from you know called the false self or the lower self whatever small self and we live from this place most people live from this place and you know we're powerful reality generators right as you well know so every person place thing time and event every condition everything in our lives is a reflection of what we're predominantly believing yeah. you know so 
Yeah, I, I love that you say that. Um, you know, it's it's a reminder, and that is so. Even if people watch it, you know, one, two, three, four, ten times, because that is the key. Is exactly what you said there. The reminder of how amazing we are, and you and I have known each other for oh, probably now like twelve, thirteen years, in and out of of things, and watching, you know, as we had to remind ourselves, you know, way back then reminding ourselves and I know we've had those conversations in the past and it's easy to forget with the noise and the distraction and how amazing and unlimited we really are and what we can create and what and that that that's a perfect perfect space when you started to create this this new movie the grand self and you really dove in what were some of your big breakthroughs and aha moments, because I know when we create pieces like this, we always have our own beautiful breakthroughs because it came through in the movie so beautifully. But what were some of the things, whether it was people that you were working with or, you know, yourself as transforming through this movie and this process? Well, you know, the movie, as you know, so it it kicks off with, with a heartbreak, you know, and I was so in love with that girl, Karen Walker, you know, and now a very good friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and when she broke it off with me, you know, I don't want to say too much, you know, for people who haven't seen the movie, but when she, when she broke it off, you know, um, I think people can really relate to that segment because, you know, it triggers, the conditioning, you know, the deep beliefs that I was living by, that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't worthy, wasn't good enough, you know? And, uh, and so, you know, as the movie progresses, you know, my mom gives me that book, which Mm -hmm. how that even found it into our family, you know, it's way into our family is really amazing because that book was like a classic from the 60s or 50s or something and you know but it's but it's a bestseller still a bestseller today you know um and and in that book you know I just was reading and resonating that oh my god I can see why my life is the way it is you know there's a there's a real correlation you know I was able to identify from what I was thinking to how my reality was looking and it was like and the author said you can change those deep predominant subconscious beliefs and your life will change. Yeah. You know, I I love that. And I think one of the misconceptions that people have, and when we go through that choice to change it, there can be a little bit of triggers or resistance in it, right? Because you're going now against all those old, I call them the BS systems, not just belief systems, but the BS systems, you know, we're going against all those systems so the you know your body gets these resistance of w- wait a minute am I actually safe if I let them go? And I think that that is that is one of those I, right now when I look at the world and you probably notice this an observation that that seems to be part of that you know oscillating space we're in right now is wow if I let go of all this am I okay over here? What, do you, what was your experience with that? Because I know as we're all changing, it's people think it's all like, ooh, roses and puppy dog tails. And it's, it's not because you got to get real with what's inside. Yeah, exactly. And we've, we've, made, we've created attachments to the small self. So none of us want to feel unworthy, not good enough. But yet we've created an identity that feels like home, not a very good home, but a home. And so, you know, we start, we start, you know, embracing more of who we really are through thought and feeling starts to feel a little uncomfortable where we're out of our comfort zone. And, uh, and so, and that can feel really scary. It's, it's a threat to, to our small self. You know, one thing that um, we didn't have room in the movie uh, to depict, but, but part of my journey, so, so my mom gives me this book, I start applying the principles and, you know, of course, of course, the reality looks the exact same. So, you know, you really have to get, have to shift your focus to what you're creating over what's appearing, which really reality, what we call facts, is just the reflection of our previous beliefs, you know? And yeah. so we really have to embrace that new reality, even though there's no evidence of it in our lives. And so one thing we weren't able to depict in the movie, but 
I ended up in the middle of this, my teeth, you know, I'm 16 years old and my teeth started giving me incredible problems as I was like focusing on this new reality. And it's like that small self trying to bring you back, you know, look at you, you're just a limited human, you, you know, you, you got teeth problems like everybody <laughs> else. And I had to go through, you know, four root canals during this process. But even during the process and even during the Novocaine after and everything being kind of numbed up, I just refused to give it any power. And I just kept pivoting to my reality, despite the incredible pain. I was just like, you know what? I'm not buying into it. I'm going to give this reality. And then, of course, remarkably, you know, as the movie progresses too, it shifts. It completely shifts. And everyone started mirroring my new, my new practice thoughts and feelings. Yeah, you know, and, and that is so true in what you're saying there is, when you actually, no matter what's going on in here, when you really get your heart and your thoughts and your vibration, it does change it. It lets go. And I know I've experienced that even in my own body. Like, you know, even doctors today, they're like, what did, how, how did you even get rid of that? Like, they still tell me, you know, that wouldn't be possible or osteopath it's like how is your bones regenerating this isn't humanly possible he said that to me like two weeks ago he's like this isn't po-. i said it is he goes i know it is but i'm watching your butt this he can't put it together right he's like yeah. you're like fascinating but this is what i love is what you're saying is when we harness that and then our systems become so strong and repair and healthy and then that energy is constantly vibrating but you're so right where people look at the reality of, well, okay, well, I woke up yesterday, I started this work, and today it looks the same. Right, right. And then they go, okay, that didn't work because what, what a lot of people are unlearning, and I'd love your perspective on this, is they're unlearning that the, it's not a quick fix. It's a way of living. It's a way of trusting. It's a way of embracing the new each and every day. Because I know I have practices, but I, you have practices as well that you stay connected to, correct? Every day yes. to make sure you're in that vibration. Yes, absolutely. Well, and first, Tracy, I, I just like to address what you said, because, you know, your story is, is amazing and fantastic um, as well. And, you know, when, when you're saying your doctor says it's not possible, but yet I'm, you know, I, I'm seeing this, really is, really is, is what he's saying, I feel, is... Uh, is, you know what, I wasn't taught that this is possible. Exactly. And, you know, and in the medical journals that are coming out, they, they don't talk about this, you know? I, I mean, it's, it's happening more and more, you know? But, so, yeah. <laughs> but really, he came up against his conditioning, you know? And now he's looking at, you know, the x-rays or whatever and the results, and it's like, hmm, you know, I, I can't dispute these facts that you have created. And yeah. so... <laughs> Well, I love it. He's like, he's like, when are you come back? It's like I've become a sort of science project in a way, right? Even though I just like, I like the care, right? I just like yeah. body care. And yeah. uh, you know, when we're working, a lot of people, we like our body care too. And that, that that's really, really beautiful. What are some of the things that you found have kept you connected, kept you on, when you had that breakthrough, and you talk about the movie, when you had the breakthrough, because you, you went through this place of right getting your creation manifested and going oh my god like what's happening right push it away and I'll go to all this other stuff but when you had your final breakthrough of saying I want to live like this what was your aha moment that could help other people that are listening to say hey wait a minute I could take that and apply what he did as well yeah and this is also a good question and it's also what what drove the movie and what's driving the movie for me, um, this is actually the only movie and project I've ever worked on that I wanted to quit at times. It, I just thought, you know, it was, it was, there were so many challenges to overcome in, in the making of this movie. And, but is what drove me is when I had that awakening, you know, so I started applying the principles and my life started changing, you know, and kind of the basic things like from the secret movie, you know, it's like I became an A student with less study, you know, I manifested my dream girlfriend at the time that I wanted, my dream car, you know, all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But something so much greater than all of that happened because I was elevating my thoughts so high and it was like I became aware of this higher self that I've always been but I was covering it up. 
And that was powerful. And then I got into instant manifestation and just living this high state for a year. But when I, when I hit instant manifestation, something felt really uncomfortable mm -hmm. and, and it really scared me. And, um, and that fear I focused on and I started to spiral down, you know? But um, I'd say during that time of awakening and that joy, the biggest thing was the contrast. It's like, oh my God, you know, I, I'm light and perfection. And so is everyone because I was seeing this light shining through, you know, leaves and trees and people and animals. And I was seeing that this whole universe is actually, you know, I get what they mean in the East that it's an illusion. You know, it's because it's a reflection of our minds. It's a reflection of what we believe and it's thoughts and feelings in form. And so that joy of realizing who, who I was, contrary, you know, and, and looking back at who I believed I was for my whole life up until I was 17, you know, and, 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 and the pain of feeling so separate and disconnected. And here's the thing, you know this, this is why it hurts. This is why we call it pain, because it's not in harmony with who we are. It, it will never feel good. To, 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 to be um, uh, in disharmony with our source. And so it's what, draw, it's what drove me to finish, what drives this movie, you know, and I want to give a whole lot away, you know, because um, there's yeah, a lot of- we want to watch it, the link will be below. <laughs> yeah, in the film. But, but is what really drives me is, you know, I know what it feels like to feel so disconnected. You don't even want to be here. And I felt a victim to who I was. I'm like, it's just who I am, you know? I wish I was a better person, but it's just who I am and it sucks. Why do I have to be like this? And, you know, that pain was unbearable. It was unbearable to me. And then, you know, when you have that awakening experience, you realize it's a lie. It's a lie that was just my conditioning. That is not who I am. That is not who I was. I'm not my thoughts and feelings, not my emotions, you know? And none of us are. So that's the biggest message, you know, is this mistaken identity. And I think that's where everyone, and, and you know, your viewers are also saying the same thing. They know this inside. It's like, I knew it. I knew I was not this person. This is the thing. And I believe, you know, even if, if you want to go biblical for a moment, I believe a couple thousand years ago, Jesus came with that message. And what was the message? He tried to free people from their limiting beliefs about themselves. It's like, He's like, what you, what, you know, what I've done, you can do and even greater. And it's like, you're not this limited human that's separate. And that, that's such a powerful message. And we all know that inside, but because of our conditioning and our collective conditioning, the world is reflecting that, you know, so we hear this information and we know it. We're like, yes, we go out into the world and we see a hospital, we see more. But if we can remind ourselves that these are also reflections, you know? At one time, people were dying of scurvy. You, you go to doctors, the best doctors of the time, and they say, you know, you're gonna die. There's nothing we can do. You got scurvy, you're, you're gonna be dead. And it's like, oh, wow, nothing we can do. And that reality drastically shifted when they realized there was a vitamin D deficiency. Nobody dies of scurvy anymore. Well, and I love, I love a few points there because you're right. I always say when you go through times, I love that you said about um, the Christ was because exactly that was it. It was like, don't really worship me, but see what you can do. Like I can do this, you can do this, right? So it was that, I love that beautiful awakening. And it, it's true because I know when you wanted to leave the world, I wanted to leave the world when, you know, I was told my nothing else you could do body, whatever. Like I, that was a pivotal moment, right? Where I'm like, okay, am I going to die or am I going to stay here for my kids? But again, it was this whole needing to choose something and it's, it's difficult as well, which people can understand when they watch the movie and they, and I, I get the feedback you do where they're going, well, I cry because that is me. Like you said, that's me. However, there's this, conditioning that when people when we all wake up I know you had it I had it many people that wake up we have it and we go okay am I different am I from another planet like I know this I'm ready to do it but then there's that that space right of looking at your family or looking at your friends and saying you know am I really worth it 
to really dive into everything I know I am, maybe some people will have to leave, but maybe they could also come along with the journey when they see the greatness that you're showing up in. So what, what did you find with that when you started to really wake up, you know, because that can be a fear for people, right? When they say, I want to embrace all this unlimited potential. And then they go, but am I going to lose my friends and my family, even though they know it's not serving them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, even, you know, at, at the, during the 17 year experience and feeling, you know, that incredible power of instant manifestation. And then there was this fear and I didn't know what it was. It was unconscious. And I had no idea that, you know, we had these unconscious beliefs that, that you know, were that if we were to allow and embrace, I wouldn't have had to go through all the darkness of feeling like I was disconnected uh, yeah. from my source after that experience, you know? And I think, again, you know, reminding ourselves that everyone and everything is a reflection of our beliefs. So a lot of times it's good to observe the feedback and welcome it. It's just like, you know, um, if you're noticing a charge, you know, an emotional response mm -hmm. to what some of your friends are saying or coworkers or whatever it is, uh, as you're changing, you know, they're reflecting you, your, your own deepest beliefs. You know, a lot of people are starting on their path to become very successful. A lot of people are like, you know what, what if you fail and, you know, this is too risky. You, you risk everything. You've quit your good cushy job. You know, what are you going to do if it, it, and all this sort of stuff, they're reflecting their own fears. So if you can, if you can look at that feedback, yeah, there's a part of me that is fearful. Yes. And they're mirroring that, but I still choose to move forward and embrace who I really am. Yeah, I, I like that. I don't know. Um, I'm sure you've had this. I, I don't know how many times I was told, you're crazy. You're crazy to go on that path. What are you thinking? You know, go back to corporate. And I was at my heart just couldn't do it. Right. It just couldn't do it anymore. And I was yeah. like, all right, I know this is where I'm being. And I'm just and it was you're right. It was scary when you make that transition and you make the change. And that's why they're bringing that up. But the more we just keep going and, and moving through and that's this is that pivotal time. What what do you notice in now that the movie's out and you can breathe a little bit more because we all know when we're making stuff like this, I tell guys all the time, you hear me say this, when we do big transitions, you've got to be heads down. You know, there's a lot to do. But when you look at the new earth and you're connecting to this beautiful new space we're going, what, what are you noticing? What are the changes you're noticing on the planet? What are the changes you're noticing in people and places that really inspire you? Yeah, you know, well, old systems are falling and those systems are outdated. They didn't support us, they never did. So financial systems, uh, it was even announced this week, I, I think in, in Germany um, and a couple other European countries that, you know, the central banks are closing, the Federal Reserve, yes. which has never been federal, was never federal, you know, <laughs> they just use that yeah. name like, there is federal is federal express you know yeah. um, but all of these old systems are falling apart so it can feel very scary and be and very uncertain if you're looking at the surface level but when we realize you know this was an enslavement system and you know created by a few people that didn't want us all to awaken and flourish and you know they position themselves really well but even they as corrupt as it's been have that flame of light and love within them. And I believe that. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that and you know how horrible a lot of people are, but you know, we can't even imagine some of their conditioning that they've, oh. that they've gone through. And unfortunately, some people seek to enslave their brothers and sisters instead of empower, but even that's changing. So I think we're seeing these incredible things happen that these systems that have never supported us. But again, and exact, it's exactly, Tracy, like how you started this conversation about those attachments to our own smaller self. You know, these are extensions of that smaller self. We didn't know who we were, you know? So, you know, we elected a governance system that controlled us instead of looked out for our best interest. And, and now as we're waking up, we're like, hey, this really doesn't resonate, you know? It's like, I have enough worth in me to now recognize this. I think there's a better way. This doesn't feel good. But yeah. when we felt we we didn't deserve and we felt we needed to be punished and all that sort of stuff, well, of course, from that place, we created these systems. So I like to look at it as, you know, 
the, the, the greatest things that are happening is as we're awakening, these old outdated systems are crashing and giving way to new systems, you know, and, uh, and I think the uncertainty is we don't, we haven't quite embraced the new systems yet and, and the old systems are still collapsing. Yeah. And, but if we can just trust and there's great things happening already and coming um, that are mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, I know I see it. You see it all the times. And I'm always talking to my community about this. Like I've been telling them for five years, people for five years, are like you're crazy. And now they're like, Oh my God, I get what you're saying. And I always say, imagine a world where, you know, there isn't poverty, there isn't lack, people are helping each other. And I heard I heard that same announcement with the central banks and what's happening in Europe and how they're transitioning and making, you know, cracking a, a, a bank, right? Which is independence, which is sovereignty for people and reclaiming their sovereignty and remembering that they are like, we're all children of, I say God, which is to me, love. It's a universal, beautiful energy of love. And so we're all from this beautiful love source. And I say, if you can like, just, and this is what I love so much time about the movies, like, you're, you're reaffirming to people, like grab your love and kind of just throw it out to everybody and know and trust that these new systems are really going to benefit all of humanity. Like you can see there's sort of, like you said, imagine, and I, I love you said this, imagine the pain, imagine the imprints, imagine the conditioning that some of these so-called referred to bad people, hello, Maggie, she always joins us, <laughs> just to know what's going on, um, you know, that they went through. And so they only know maybe power or greed or control. And they're, I like you, I say, I, I believe when I see the souls and I look, sometimes people say, you're so patient with people. I said, but if you look at their souls, it's just love. They're just compiled like with lots of laundry on top of them of just conditioning and pain. And, but when you look at the bottom, everybody is just from that beautiful energy of love. And that's what I love so much about what, what you're bringing to the world right now, because it was interesting when you were saying too, that there were moments you wanted to quit on the film. And for everybody listening or watching this later, I want you to really listen to that because how many times in your life, and I know you and I have faced this a lot, when we're on the verge of big breakthroughs, we want to quit. We want to quit. And what do you say to that? Because what was it when you went, I want to quit? <laughs> but what was that, that talk or that feeling or that connection that you just went, I, you know, I can't, I know this is what I need to do. I got to yeah. keep going. It's exactly that. You know, I choose to listen to the higher voice in me. And we all have the conditioned voice, which is really just a, just a, a bunch of, gangs of neurons, you know, for previous conditioning, that's what those voices are in our heads. I can't do this, but, you know, I haven't. Uh, but you know, Tracy, it's interesting. Um, I met someone in Los Angeles who is a top um, agent and manager for, for a lot of the talent. Um, and he's also managed and broke big bands. I mean, big names. And, you know, he, he said, we're having a talk and he said, you know, biggest challenge is always this. He's like, the bands, more often than not, almost most of them break up or, or, or quote unquote sabotage themselves just before their biggest breakthrough. Just as the, the band's about to break, they get in fights. And is, is what that is, it's the conditioning that's come up, you know? And it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere because we've all been conditioned. And, uh, you know, and the conditioning is just what we learn to be true about ourselves and our life. And we think it's, you know, we're so powerful. We live by that conditioning, you know, so we all think we're right. <laughs> I know. I always sit back and I'm like, okay, what, if I get in that funk, sometimes I always say, okay, what's right about this? I am not seeing, let me take a breath and show me <laughs> like what's right about this. I'm not getting because yeah. yeah, we, we get in our own way and, it's funny you say that. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, when you were back out here last time when you were doing filming for this movie and you were at the house, there was a young man that came, Mike, to the home. And you did meet him, so I don't, you might not remember, but because this was like four or five years ago. He was in a band, and at that time, one of his partners was like, I am out of here, I'm done. I kept, I kept saying to him, keep going, keep going. 
And his his friend left, and literally it was, I think it was an under six months, they signed like this big deal with Warner Brothers. And now, you know, they're making their music, they're all over the place. And and I just, I, I love that you told that story because it's so true. It's like, we're on the brink of this miracle or we're on this brink of change. And if that fear comes up and you just take that moment and say, what am I afraid of? Is it like you're raising your bar, you know, you're raising the ceiling, but there's so much beauty on the other side. Yeah. So much yeah. beauty, even though we can have our ups and downs, it's called a journey or like, you're going to have those days. I think people forget that sometimes, but it's okay. It's just a day. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all going to higher and higher levels. I know you are. I know I am. And there's no limit, you know, and, uh, and sometimes we react and that's okay. And if we can embrace it, you know, and, and let it go and move back into the light faster, you know, the, then um, the easier, the easier those times are. And then we find, you know, it's like, feels like every day is a wonderful day, you know? I know. And, and this year, it's so interesting with what's going on in the world because, you and I have talked about this, but this year is a really, it's high vibrating. Like there's, there's a lot of incredible energy coming to the planet, to all of us as everybody here, the animals, the earth, like things look brighter, things look clear and the earth is repairing and restoring. Like there's so much beauty in the energy right now. And, and Tracy, let, let's talk about that for, for a second, because you said a couple really, really good points, you know? And so that is, it, it, you know, and I often describe it like this. Um, it was actually, well, here's another example even. The other day I was home at a time where I'm usually not home. And, and uh, during that time, that's when the light is the brightest in the house. And so I thought my home is, is always really clean. But being home at that time, I saw some dirt in corners that I, I, I've never seen before. And, and why? It's because there's more light. And this is what's happening with us. And so a lot of people say, you know, you know, life is happening. 2020 is hard and all this sort of stuff. Nothing is happening. You know, life is not happening to you. Life does not throw a curveball at you. 2020 <laughs> is not, doesn't have to be a hard year. Is what we're witnessing is the reflection of our subconscious beliefs. There's more light and we're all awakening and the consciousness is rising. And while that's happening, and it's a beautiful thing, it can feel very intense um, for a lot of people, but it's a beautiful thing because we get to see there's light on what are we holding on to? And it's like whatever right now, the worst feeling uh, or thought that people are having about themselves that they're trying to avoid. And literally some people are just becoming workaholics. Some people are drinking. Some people are just going out partying, clubbing off. All weekends whatever it is at any cost to avoid you know rushing off on the weekend to go camping and anything but to feel those feelings but those feelings are giving you feedback and the feedback is these thoughts and feelings are not in harmony with who you are and let's change them let's harmonize with the divine and the other thing i wanted to say what you brought up a little earlier is you know with some of the people that we've allowed to to you know, being government and in control and all this sort of stuff. It's, um, that's something that's happening for me personally more and more is my heart's opening to the love. And a, a lot of these people have, have sought to enslave humanity because they've been taught that they're dark and, uh, and that they're not the light. And so they hate the light, but why do they hate the light? Because they feel they're not the light. And here's the thing, they're the light too. Maybe it's not so on the surface, but underneath it, they are the light too. And, you know, we have compassion for a, ch a child goes to school and gets sent home because he attacked all these kids. And then you find out because, you know, they were making fun of his, of his, his mother who just passed and making fun of him. And then all of a sudden, everybody's feelings towards him changes to love and compassion. But for adults, we don't. And unfortunately, a lot of people in our society, we still think prison's a good system. We still yeah. think, you know, killing them for what they've done is, is, you know, capital punishment, some states, is a good idea. And I think we need to keep, you know, rising up in, in our own love and compassion. And that happens the more aware we become of who we are, because we're love. 
I mean, at the end of the day, the grand self is unconditional love and it's joy and it loves and adores us so much. I can feel it right now. My heart's awakening as we're talking. And, you know, you know that's part of our energy. There's so much energy. <laughs> it, it is. And, you know, we need to love them all. You, you know, you've seen Facebook groups of, of quote unquote, you know, light workers, you know, saying, if you dark people don't wake up, you're going to be obliterated. And it's like, <laughs> while there might be some truth in that, it's like, yeah. <laughs> that's not love, no. you know? It's like, no. how can we embrace you and, and, and mm-hmm. love you? And I know a lot of people don't like that because they're so conditioned to that judgment. You did something wrong, you know, and whatever. But yeah, there's their love too, Tracy, you yeah. know? You know what I like too is yeah, when we've had things that have been what we perceive as wronged by us or to us or whatever. And I was, I was doing, I was teaching this in the summer because when, when that happens and you're caught up in that, right? You get caught up in that. It's easy to start to say things or do things or whatever. It's just the way conditioning is. But when you go in and I've experienced this at such a high level, when you can actually raise yourself high enough. And it was, I I experienced actually the highest level ever this summer. That's why I was teaching on is when I was, you're actually able to look at that person or that place or thing or whatever that experience was. And you literally can start to see and feel the layers of whatever their pain or whatever. And then it's like your heart just cracks open and everything that was maybe caught in your system, literally, literally in seconds drops off. And there's is, like you said, so much love that's transmuting to that person. And even though you may never see them again, you can walk away knowing that you're at peace and there's that forgiveness and love and kindness. And that is right now where, when I look at the new earth and I look at where we're going, it's, there's so much beauty. And like you said, re reprogramming, like unlearning, unlearning that this is how it is, because this is why the movie's great timing, because you're basically saying, no, remember, remember, remember. It's it's like Dorothy, you know, there's no place like home, click in her shoes, but it's like, remember who you are. And I keep hearing this from spirit all the time to remind people, remember who you are. And I know it's important. Like we have guidelines in our community where we're like, you ha- keep lifting each other up, keep pulling each other up because when we can remind each other who we are and we can remind each other our amazingness that we are inside, what happens is that light bulb will go on a little quicker rather than saying you weren't good enough or you didn't do that or why would you do that or what's wrong with you, right? It's yeah. just changing that perception is I've got you, we're here for you, no more yeah. judgment. And you you did that really really well in this film. You've you've done it really well throughout your life. And one of the things I've always respected about you, and you and I are both like this, we're very tenacious at looking inside, going, okay, maybe I messed that up. What do I need to do? Okay, maybe I had a perception that was wrong there. What do I need to do? And yeah. I think that's one of the biggest things that if people would learn that it's okay. We are going to make yeah. mistakes. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. And you know, Tracy, it really is okay. And uh, not only is it super powerful to be in, introspective, but also don't you notice when someone just comes from their truth, no matter what they've done, no matter what they've even messed up, quote unquote, for you, um, the minute they're like, man, you know what? I was not in a good space. I was not feeling good about myself that day. I was feeling disconnected and I, I messed up. And it's like, there's nothing left to say. They've taken responsibility and it's like, all right, great, you know, like, let's move on. And, and it's just that innocence, you know, is so beautiful. And that's who we all are, just yeah. innocent. And even, you know, getting back to, because this is a big theme right now, right, is, you know, the cabal and all this sort of stuff, right? Um, but even if you go back, back to this, and it's like, you know what? They're all doing the best they can. We, we all do the best we can from, from where we're at as horrible and, and as despicable as it can be. I mean, I've had to forgive, um, you know, my mom's rapist. And that was one of the hardest things. And it was like, but when you see it from a different perspective and you also see the co-creation and how on a soul level, 
not that any of us need to, but how my mom uh, co-created that experience to heal. And she has grown so greatly. And, and what does that mean to heal? She became aware of limiting beliefs that were causing her personality, that were causing all of these, you know, attackers in her life and these horrible experiences. And, but she was willing to use that even to grow, you know? So, and, and, and you know, and when I first heard, out, heard about this, I was 19, you know, I wanted to kill them, of course, it's my mom. And, and then, you know, you evolve in understanding and realize you can even love them. They didn't know who they were. Look at what they went through as, as children. It doesn't make it right, doesn't condone it. No. But when you have that kind of understanding, you know, um, there's only love everywhere. It's very freeing. Your, your mom's just the sweetest little soul. I had the pleasure because I can say that I've met James's mom. She's, she's a wonderful lady. Um, and, and you what's should amazing. You see her now, Tracy. You should I, see her now. She's I, a different I'm, person. Yeah. I'm sure like just energetically, <laughs> she's like reading like a 30 year old. So she's definitely, you know, skyrocketing and, and so beautiful. She came on this, this journey with you and it's, it's really I get that question a lot. It's interesting that you bring that up. And I do get that question a lot. It's like, how can you forgive all those people? Like, how do you have no attachment to it? And I'm like, because they just, that's all they knew at the time. And why do I want to carry it? It's only going to hurt me if I carry it. Right. And it's, so when you, when you let that go, there's, it is so freeing. Like those are luggages we don't have to carry anymore. Yeah. And it, it, it happens from a, a real place. Like when I wasn't at the place of forgiveness, I wasn't at the place of forgiveness. And that was okay too. But it feels so much better, you know, that it's like, it's, it's not a bad world, you know? It's like, it's, it, again, I'm going to say this over and over. It's a reflection of our conditioning. It yeah. really is. And, you know, my mom is such a great example, like many of us, her life, her reflection is in every angle now reflecting her new beliefs about herself, about who she really is. And it's incredible. People coming up to her in the mall, you know, asking her what she does to have such beautiful skin, you know, these, these people commenting on her figure and, you know, all this sort of stuff and, and uh, where she used to feel that she didn't matter because that was her conditioning her whole life. And when she shifted that, it, she's a new person. She looks different. She talks different. And because she's embraced more of who she is. And you know what that feels like. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that. I get people all the time. They write into me like, I watched that video. Your voice is different. Your voice has changed. And I'm like, well, it's one of the things that happens when you just keep shifting. <laughs> you know, your body changes, your voice changes. Like yeah. you and I don't, you and I've had this conversation. We don't believe in aging. We don't even give it a thought. I'm like, we're in the journey line. We're not in the aging line. And people are like, how do you guys do that? Like people ask me, because oh, James like 20 years old. <laughs> you know, it's like, he doesn't believe in the aging line. We're not in that line. And You know, Tracy, I, I actually get some flack for that because, you know, people have, have commented sometimes, even after the movie, and they're like, well, he'll, he'll know more when he's out of his 20s. He'll learn. <laughs> that's kind of funny but um but yeah and, and tracy i just want to say too to to the people listening you know you really really have done the work and you really look at your results in your life in the past and what part of me is creating that and and what what's going on in my body and what does my body have to say and and you shift it and you become a different person and, and really when we say different you become more of the real you you know which was always there you know glimmering through your eyes somewhere and now you're you're just such a beautiful expression of that and and we're just beginning you know <laughs> well and you you can come from that perspective because they say if you go back to like where we met like 12 years ago or whatever and you know still my my body was still doing this it's still shaking and still you know had all these things going on but that's learning right. and letting go and like I had five neurologists say I would never get rid of that born with it nervous and I I haven't had it for 10 years 10 years like this is in until you see that so thank you that that means a lot because 
it, it feels like we're just getting going, even though we've yeah. been in this space for a long time. But it, it just feels this whole new level of expansion where I, it's almost like seeing people all around just floating and getting into this. What, like, I always say by 2025, we'll probably be looking back like, what was all that? <laughs> like, what was that last 25 years or thousand years we went through? You know, it, know. it, it it's going to happen quick. I know. Well, when they discovered electricity, it was always there. But but we all lived in darkness, right? And until that moment. And so we are going to look back and it's like, wow, like, like people back in the day thought that they had to take vehicles to get somewhere, you know, instead of just setting the intention and riding the light waves. And, you know, it, it's not so unthinkable anymore. We, we've seen so much with technology. Yeah. Um, which is a reflection of consciousness of how we're awakening and you know yeah i i still have my i have to have my limited time with technology so i'm i'm still integrating Same. with it i i for me <laughs> it's okay i i love it i can't say i don't love it but at the same time i i really um I love the advancements. I love it. Well, it's like the Wright brothers, right? Like how many times were they told they were crazy and thank God they weren't crazy. Like, right. We just kept moving and evolving and shifting and, yeah, and yeah. it's, it's so beautiful. And that's th this journey. When people understand that journey, that it's a journey that whether it's an up day, a down day, whatever, that there's beauty in that journey. That's why I brought up the aging line and the journey line. Cause people are just like, well, I'm this old and this is my aging line, but in the journey line, it's unlimited. That's where you want to be. It's so, so unlimited and fun. And what experiences and what am I creating today? That's where you live. I know that's where you live each and every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, until I'm over 300, I, I don't think I have much to teach on that yet because, you know, I'm still in the process of mastering that. But, um, but you know, there are, and this is something that, that people are so surprised about. I mean, there's many people over the age of 300 uh, living on our planet right now today. And, uh, and you know, that just shows another thing of what's, of what's possible. And, you know, Tracy, we're in such a great time right now. And it's interesting because, you know, when we, we made What If the Movie about 10 years ago, and, and, you know, and it's about the knowledge. And that movie is still popular today. In fact, it's becoming more popular. Someone wrote in just a couple months ago that this movie literally saved their life. And so people are really resonating with those principles, you know. But I think we're moving from a time of, of the knowledge to applying the knowledge and then to evidence-based science and we're moving from there into just the heart, um, into just direct knowing, direct intuition, where we don't even need the science. But right now, it's very valuable to a lot of people because they can show, you know, not too long ago, you know, a, a lot of these metaphysical authors are talking about, you want to change your life, change your thoughts, change your feelings around it. You know, that was the secret. Feeling is the secret. And it's like, it, it sounds a little out there to a lot of people. Now there's so much science you know, from every avenue, especially from Dr. Bruce Lipton. He's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, we featured him in our first movie, of course. Mm -hmm. But And the science shows that, hey, when you're taking a moment and you are changing how you feel and your thoughts, even in seconds, you're changing the way your genes express. You're creating coherence in the heart, in the brain. You're, you're transforming your neurological function. And your whole body is changing in that moment. Yeah. But... We have to practice that and condition ourselves enough to be in harmony with our source. So that's our predominant state of being. So those changes last. Because if you just do it in a meditation and go back to your normal self, your body starts changing back to its normal self again. I love that. I love that you say that. Yeah, I used to be, oh, I want to see more science. Now people are like, don't you want the science? I'm like, no, I don't care. Like, I just to the point, I don't care. I'm just like, I'm just having fun with the divine. I don't care. <laughs> you know, don't need it. And I know you don't need it either, but it is good when people are like, what is that? Oh, just point you over there. Go look over there. <laughs> yeah. And the beauty is it's available and you can do your own research and try to prove it wrong. You can't, you know, <laughs> you can. And you start living it. I, I, I can't believe we're getting to the top of the hour here. Like go so quickly. <laughs> yeah. For but, sure. 
um, I know. So one, what do you want to leave with people today and tell them again, where to find the movie? We're going to put the links below. So you guys will have it all too. For people listening later, you'll be able to get a hold of it too. But can you share all of the information? Yeah. So I guess click the link to watch the movie. And the biggest thing is, um, I guess I'd like to say is that voice that you're hearing, you know, underneath everything that says who you really are. Um, that is the right voice. That is not your imagination. The conditioning voice will try to talk you out of that. And just if, if you can remember and remind yourself that go with what feels right, because if it feels right, that's a signal that it's in harmony for you. It's in alignment for you. So if it doesn't feel good to feel that you're not good enough or you can't do it or you shouldn't do it or whatever, don't listen to that. Listen to what truly resonates to you and you're right. And I promise you, you know, we've all been living in this mistaken identity, living much less than we deserve and much less than who we really are. That's the greatest lie. That's the only lie. And, when, and the greatest work we can do is to harmonize our thoughts and feelings with our source because if we do that one thing, it automatically readjusts all of our reflections. Uh, in our life, our relationships are going to transform. Not because you're working on the relationship, because you've shifted your vibration. And that relationship will adapt, either vibrate out of your life or whatever. Everything in your life will transform. So the biggest, that's the greatest thing we can do, is harmonize our thoughts and feelings with who we really are. Raise them up. I, I, I absolutely love it. I always say, how do you feel about that? And Exactly. All those other pieces are going to click. They're like a puzzle. They'll just click into place. So remember what he said there. What are you feeling? And don't discount that. And even if you write, you need to write it down or say, this is who I am or this is my feeling to remind yourself who you are and where you're going and what you're doing. I, I can't thank you enough for, for taking time. I know you have a lot on your plate, but it was so important because it's important that people watch this movie it's important i believe that people go watch what if as well i really do i tell people still to watch it all the time and i'm i really am grateful and thankful for what you've done and what you've put out in the world because it is the right timing and you can see millions of people are going to be really you've hit the button who am i really like you've hit the button in the film so Thank you so much for joining me today. Can't uh, well, thank you for having me, Tracy. And thank you for your own transformation and being you because you are living it. And you're a beautiful example. And our work is so similar, you know, uh, harmonizing with source. And so thank you. <laughs> okay. The more of us keep rising together. I say we got to keep rising together. We're pulling each other up. And so yeah. thank you. I, again, everybody, you can click the link below for the Grand Self movie. I know many of you feedback, keep it coming and keep it coming to us or to James. And because it's really important, your, your testimonials, I always say, are filled with so much light and so much love that when somebody else hears your testimonial, they get that beautiful energy too, and they get to transform. So thank you. Thank you again, James. Have an incredible week, everyone. We'll see you next week right here, same time, same place on the Tracy L. Clark Show with Dr. Navaz. So you can call in and uh, ask some of your questions to the functional medicine doctor. Have an incredible week. Till next week, we'll see you again. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Tracy L. Clark Show with me, Tracy L., where I teach you how to connect to the God consciousness so you can unlock your superpowers and connect at light speed and live your extraordinary life. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where together we will unlock the secrets of your body and your life. As the founder of the Body Regeneration Academy, I, Tracy Al, will provide you with the insight and simple tools you can apply right now in your life to move you forward and leave the past in the dust. To join the Body Regeneration TLC Online Academy, make sure you check me out at tracyalclark.com. 